and let us all that we can to build a better future. So not that old joke. And RFK Jr. Now, why am I talking about these two people? Well, RFK Jr. is running for president, Kit. What are you talking about? And Dick Durbin, he's a Democrat, a U.S. senator. What do they have in common? i got to be careful with this word here. But uh, first name Jeffrey, last name E. You know, the guy who mysteriously something happened to him in a secure prison building. It was two guards who fell asleep and the power went out. Oh, my God, he's gone. Gone from this world. He didn't escape. He just, well, he's he's not in the world of the living, YouTube. So there you go. <laughs> um, but, yeah, apparently uh, Dick Durbin subpoenaed Jeffrey E's flight logs. And it's also been revealed that RFK Jr. was on a flight with Jeffrey E. Ew. Gross. So first, let's talk about our good friend Dick. Senator Dick Durbin. And what Dick decided to do was subpoena Jeffrey E.'s flight logs. And when confronted about it, Dick responded, I don't know anything about his flight logs. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me. You do not have the privilege to pretend you don't know who he is. Or how ABC News could have blown the lid on that story. Yeah, that's right. I'm talking about James O'Keefe, how he released that video showing how ABC News reports when the cameras weren't live and how they were so upset they could have blown the lid on that story. But up, oh, up, oh, they couldn't talk about it because turns out one of the members of the royal family, that's right, the scumbag one. <laughs> hey, Kit, which one is it? I don't know. Uh, they would make sure that, oh, no, we, 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 we can't have the royal family be intertwined with Jeffrey E. If ABC News goes through with it, well, you're not going to talk to Will and Kate, you know, the the two potential future monarchs. You know, last I checked, didn't we have a revolution? Because maybe I'm old fashioned and perhaps, you know, in an alternate universe, there'd be a Kit Cabello that's very staunch and anti-royalist. Like, hey, we have nothing to do with the royals. But uh, hey, ABC News. Got to get in the clicks, got to get in the views. So let's go ahead and pull up this video here. So all of you can see firsthand what Senator Dick Durbin did. <sighs> here we go. Folks, if you want to vomit in your brain, please do so. And if you want to punch something, go ahead. But make sure there's nobody there. And if you're on the road, pull over and scream so you don't get caught in road rage. Chairman Durbin, can I ask you a quick question? Um, why won't you subpoena Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs? So who are you? Hillary Vaughn with Fox. With Fox, of course. Uh, I don't know anything about his flight logs. But why won't you subpoena them? Why don't you want to know? I don't know the issue. I know who Epstein was. But I certainly don't know anything about the issue. Well, he was charged with sex trafficking, so why don't you want to know who was utilizing his never, private plane? Never been raised by anyone. Well, Senator Blackburn has wanted to subpoena them, and there hasn't been a vote in your he committee. Said a word to me. Not you know, politicians can't. can't would, would would it kill you? Is 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 is, is it is it an anathema for you to tell the truth? Would, would it would it kill these politicians to really tell the truth? I have to wonder. You know, I made this joke before on the show, but George Santos is their avatar. Right now, Dick Durbin, he looks very polished, right, as, as a politician, right? But take away all that fancy stuff, and he's just like Santos. They all are. Santos just, just got very sloppy. He went in there very sloppy, nasty, That's but he's he's a true representation of Congress. I'm so sorry to disappoint you. If you're a diehard Democrat voter, diehard Republican voter, George Santos is the avatar of all your favorite elected officials. Past and present. Not a word. But aren't you curious, like, what high-profile or powerful people might be closeted predators and pedophiles? Doesn't that concern you? So why won't you subpoena them if you can? It's the first time anyone has raised it. Thank you, Fox. So do you, are you curious about it? Will you do it? Yeah, we don't know. Boy, oh, boy. Durbin's a liar. Yeah, no doubt, boot, buddy. Come on. Come on, bro. <laughs> they, they all are liars. Uh, I hear you. I also want to give a shout out to this wonderful uh, friend of the show, Notori Lee. You tweeted this out. And I think it's only important that we uh, pull up this video because it turns out Dick Durbin 
has had a very disturbing 48 hours. So let's go ahead and play this video for all you beautiful people. So I think it might be time for Senator Durbin from Illinois to retire. He's been in office since 1997. He's 79 years old. and it 79, going on to 80. All right, what are you doing? It's over. It's over. It's over. Time to go off into the sunset. Hasn't been a great 48 hours for him. For starters, he just blocked the release of the Epstein flight logs, and I wonder why. Look who his friends are. And Bill and Hillary, please don't cut the brakes on my car. I'm just calling it like it is. And then just a few hours. By making that statement, it's already too late, buddy. Just keep your head on a swivel and drink water. <laughs> ago, Senator Durbin, pictured here, said that we should allow illegal immigrants to join the military as a path to citizenship. If you're an undocumented person in this country and you can pass the physical and the required test, background test, the like, you can serve in our military. And if you do it honorably, we will make you citizens of the United States. They can't reach their quotas each month. They can't find enough people to join our military forces. And there are those who are undocumented who want the chance to serve and risk their lives for this country. Should we give them a chance? I think we should. So let me see if I understand. We have a record-breaking number of migrants coming into this country. We've never seen anything like this before. I also want to add a side note here in Illinois. The proposed migrant camp that was uh, to be built on the south side of Chicago above a toxic waste site uh, has been canceled. It's not going to go through, which is great news. I feel sorry for these migrants, but I remember bringing this up on the show way back, even when we were covering protests after the cameras were off. Daniel and I would talk to these activists and organizers like, hey, what's the overall real plan to help these people? Because someday the term sanctuary city. Someday people are going to listen to that word and be like, oh, it really is. Well, let's let's go there. Are we ready for them? Do we have the infrastructure and resources necessary? You already know what, what happened. It's either we were we were called racist or that we didn't understand or that yes, there is, but you know, it's it's still in the works, which is like, okay, so there's nothing. There's nothing. And we're in December. We're past November now, December. Then comes January and February. If you live in Chicago, you know it gets really freaking cold here. And a lot of these migrants are in front of police stations. A lot of these migrants don't have a roof over their head. It's getting bad out here. And all what sanctuary cities have been proven to be is nothing more but feel good points to make people look better against Trump, which is dumb. On Earth. And now this man says we should arm them so they can defend us. Yeah, you're having a hard time selling that to me. Now, I thought we already had programs like this for a select few who wanted to pass the test, who wanted to serve their country. But the fact that they're pushing legislation to ramp this up exponentially, that's concerning. Now, this really concerns me for a few reasons. Number one, they would probably use these illegal migrant troops against us when they're trying to impose something upon us. It's our right to assemble. It's our right to protest. But mark my words, they will use all of these illegal migrants to keep us in line. The now, I don't know if it's gone a little bit too far off on the edge, but... In this day and age, folks, these politicians want to remain in power. They'll easily divide us and have us go at each other's throats. Now, let's bring up RFK Jr. Because we're going to be talking about Jeffrey E. And this was aired on Fox News. But I think it's only fair that we hear the full story. So let's play it for all you people. Jeffrey Epstein's jet, were you? Yeah, I was on Jeffrey Epstein's jet two times. I was on it. Uh, in 1993, and I was on it in, and I went to Florida with my wife and uh, two children to visit my mom over Easter. Um, my my wife had some kind of relationship with Glenn Maxwell. Oh, ugh. Listen. These flight logs that have been subpoenaed by Dick Durbin, senator of Illinois. We don't know who's on that list, but uh, all right, folks, listen, listen to me very carefully. So emotionally prepare yourself. If there's an actor or actress, movie director, hey, you can be a fan of a CEO. Okay, fine. Hey, to each their own. Um, some rich person, some some rock star, musician. 
or politician. Remember, if they're in the echelon, be prepared to see some of their names in that little book. Now, I'm not saying all of them did anything horrific there. But if you're associated with that guy, I'm willing to bet 10 out of 10, they knew who he was and what he was about. And they could have stopped them, but they didn't. They could have spoke out, and they didn't. Case in point, a guy named Harvey Weinstein. All of Hollywood, all of Hollywood knew what kind of guy he was. And they said nothing. And then Hollywood, sometime trying to gain momentum from the Me Too movement, made a movie where it's like patting themselves on the back. We did a movie about the New York Times revealing who Harvey Weinstein was, you know, doing this whole big story thing, right? I hate that film. I actually was... Nonetheless, nonetheless, folks. People in Hollywood could have stopped them, but they didn't. Weinstein gave money to people like Hillary Clinton. She could have stopped them, but she didn't. And don't look me in the eye and tell me she didn't know. They know. They know. Just like a lot of rich people knew who Jeffrey E. was. They could have stopped them. But they didn't. I wonder why. Did he have anything on them? Or was it just so dangerous? I'll let you decide. Hey, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one for Kit. You know what? I mean, we don't know the full story. Maybe we need to give people a chance here. Type two. No, they knew. And they just didn't want to do anything. Don't cause a ruckus. Follow orders. I wonder how many twos we're going to get in the chats. I wonder. And they offered us a ride to Palm Beach. So I went then. And then on another occasion, I flew again with my family with, I think, four of my children and um, and uh, and Mary, my wife, to Rapid City, South Dakota, to go fossil hunting I, uh, for a weekend. And uh, but uh, why did you have to bring up fossil hunting? For those of you who don't know, I was on two dinosaur, actually technically three dinosaur expeditions, two to Montana, one to uh, South Dakota. Don't, 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 don't bring in fossil hunting with this scum. C come on. You, you went fossil hunting? Really? Really? Okay, fine. Fine. I can't have anything anymore, can I? Other, otherwise, I was, I was never on his jet alone. I, you know, I've been very open about this from the beginning. This was in '93, so it was 30 years ago. It was before anybody knew about Jeffrey Epstein's, uh, you know, his nefarious issues. And I agree with you that these, all of this information should be released. Um, and we, we should get real answers on what happened to Jeffrey Epstein and any of the high level political people that he was uh, involved with all of that should be open to the public it should be absolutely transparent and you know i don't see why any of those records would have any redactions in them why would we be hiding that from the american public because the american public will find out how much of a scumbag a lot of these politicians are all right a lot of people find out just how evil some of our elected officials are. So I don't know what Dick Durbin is doing, but Dick Durbin has a lot of, to answer for. So Senator Dick Durbin, you don't need to keep those flight logs subpoenaed, Dick. You should be revealing who those names are, Dick. It's in the interest of the American people to find out how scummy these top one percenters truly are, Dick. So Dick, don't be a Dick. Jesus Christ, this story was rough to go through. It, it, it's so interesting. You know, people want to know. And I know a lot of us might be shocked and surprised about who's on that flight list. Well, just prepare yourself. If there's somebody that you like who's a celebrity in the high echelon society, and hey, look, everyone's entitled to like who they want. Just prepare yourself to see their name. And they don't, you know, they, they probably maybe not took partook in any of illegal activities but I refuse to believe that they didn't know who he was maybe there's some people who knew maybe there's some people who just didn't know but in human history it has been made very clear to us 
throughout all ancient empires that the top one percenters knew each other's dark secrets and scandals. You think it doesn't apply in this day and age too? Because it does. And the American people and the people of the free world have a right to know who's in that little book. It's our right to know. Because some vile, evil acts were done. And people have the right to know. So that we know who these evil people are. So they can be held accountable. We believe in justice, yes? Senator Dick Durbin. He did the wrong thing. Remove that subpoena.